an idea what this is? The significance of it? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the misfires that alienated fans, doomed the movie's chances at greatness, or impacted the credibility of a franchise. I'm going on an adventure! Number 10, rushing to a team-up movie. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Men fall from the sky. The gods hurl thunderbolts. Innocents die. In the wake of the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, DC had a lot of catching up to do. They foolishly decided to do all that catching up in one go. As the second film in the fledgling DCEU, Zack Snyder's heavily anticipated Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice didn't pack the punch everyone expected. You're psychotic. That is a three syllable word for any thought too big for little minds. Marvel's first big swing at a crossover movie, The Avengers, managed to balance its story and effects with its large ensemble of heroes. Dawn of Justice just feels like a messy series of vignettes meant to set up future movies. Many fans were rightfully disappointed. And despite being a top grosser of the year, it didn't have the massive box office run DC probably wanted. What does that mean? Why did you say that name? Number nine, the John Connor Terminator, Terminator Genesis. We all know they can shapeshift. If you are John, prove it. When Arnold Schwarzenegger announced his return to the iconic franchise, even people who hated the last sequel, Terminator Salvation, were intrigued. But Terminator Genesis ended up disappointing many. For much of this franchise, the entire story had hinged on John Connor's future leadership in an apocalyptic war between humans and artificial intelligence. You cannot risk yourself even for me, do you understand? You're too important. The mid-movie reveal that Connor has been turned into a cyborg and is now the villain was a bold choice. The convoluted twist added needless complications to an already muddled story and changed the entire focus of the franchise. Is that pain real or was that a trick of memory from when I was less? Number eight, Michael Myers and Lurie Strode are related. Halloween 2. That girl, that Strode girl. That's Michael Myers' sister. Halloween writer and director John Carpenter admitted he didn't really want to write this sequel at all. In an attempt to create some material for the story, a revelation was revealed that would change everything. Halloween 2 continues Michael Myers' pursuit of Laurie Strode. However, it's revealed that Strode is Myers' younger sister. It's some kind of joke. I've been trick or treated to death tonight. The twist allegedly came out of desperation, and Carpenter would disown it later. It formed the basis of the sequels, where the story would only grow more outlandish. Once they introduced the idea of an ancient druid curse on the Myers family, fans had all but had their fill. Ultimately, the motivation made one of the scariest horror villains randomly killing way less scarier. Jesus, don't you see what he's doing here in Haddonfield? He killed one sister 15 years ago, now he's trying to kill the other. Number seven, Blofeld all along, Spectre. You came across me so many times and yet you never saw me. Le Chiffre, green, silver, all dead. Daniel Craig's portrayal of James Bond heralded a new age for the legendary spy. While the series became more adherent to modern franchise rules of continuing stories and character development between movies, each movie tended to exist on its own terms. Once the filmmakers reintroduced Bond's arch nemesis in 2015 Spectre, though, originality and good sense went out the window. It was all me, James. It's always been me the author of all your pain. Apparently, Ernst Stravo Blofeld had been behind almost every single villainous plot Craig's Bond faced. Let's just say it was more of a huh than a ha ha revelation. Blofeld's masterminding is a comic book twist that just didn't fit this franchise. It even cheapened Craig's other triumphs as Bond in movies like Casino Royale and Skyfall. Are you ready to get back to work? With pleasure, M. Number six, sewing up Deadpool's mouth. X-Men Origins Wolverine. K 
Kayla, get these kids out of here. Logan? Find another way out. This 2009 entry in the X-Men series has probably been lambasted enough. Between its uneven story and lackluster effects, there was plenty for fans to be unhappy with. A superhero known for wisecracks and one-liners might have been just a ticket to liven things up. But no, we were denied even this small mercy. Instead, the writers of X-Men Origins Wolverine decided to sew Deadpool's mouth shut. Striker finally figured out how to shut you up. This is a choice so completely off base it feels like sabotage. Fans were outraged by the stark deviation from the character's established personality. Everyone got their act together for Deadpool movies, allowing actor Ryan Reynolds full use of his sarcasm. Let us go talk to the professor. McAvoy or Stewart? These timelines are so confusing. Number 5. Contradicting the previous movie. Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. The Last Jedi was either a necessary reinvention or a franchise killer. It depends on who you ask. When it was revealed that Rey was not related to any Star Wars legacy characters, it was a bold deviation from the Chosen One narratives of previous installments. The movie suggests that heroes can be made, not just born. I thought I'd find answers here. I was wrong. I'd never felt so alone. But vicious fan backlash and the mishandled Han Solo prequel might have made the creators reconsider. The rise of Skywalker went back to doing exactly what previous installments had done. Rey wasn't actually born a nobody. She was actually the evil emperor's granddaughter. This didn't save the movie from criticism. The consensus being that it lacked imagination. Ray Skywalker. Number four, putting the extended universe before the horse, the mummy. To a new world of gods and monsters. <laughs> That's a nice extended universe you got there. It'd be a shame if someone canceled it. In an attempt to have a horse in the cinematic universe race, Universal announced it was resurrecting its roster of classic monsters to mine them for profit. The ambitious dark universe started and ended with 2017's The Mummy. This is not a tomb. It's a prison. Tom Cruise stars as an army man caught up in an ancient evil. He meets the mummy, he meets Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, then he loses the plot completely. And so do we. Full of suggestions of future installments, the movie never even threatens to come together. It goes to show that you might want to worry about creating one solid film before you pursue your franchise dreams. What's your plan? Mr. Morton, these things are complex. Number three. This time, it's personal. Jaws the Revenge. Oh, bloody hell. Get us started double time. The breath on that thing. Steven Spielberg's 1975 blockbuster is a lesson in getting bang for your buck. On the other hand, its three sequels can teach you about diminishing returns that it breaks the original cardinal rule of showing as little of the animatronic shark as possible is perhaps the least of its sins. It introduces a new and relentlessly stupid twist on a formula that's proudly telegraphed by its title. It came for him. What? It waited all this time and it came for him. The Brody family from the first film realized they're the target of a vendetta carried out by a great white shark. This shark inexplicably follows them from Amity Island to the sunny shores of the Bahamas. Jaws the Revenge effectively killed the franchise. Get up mediocrity with fattening, you'd all be whale. Number two, immediately dispatching Newton Hicks, Alien 3. There was one survivor, two dead, and a droid that was hopelessly smashed beyond repair. Much has been made of the turbulent production of David Fincher's Alien 3, with studio interference being blamed for many of its miscalculations. However, its most notorious component was probably going to bother fans no matter what. When we last saw Ellen Ripley, she was floating through space in an escape vessel with her surrogate daughter Newt and Corporal Hicks. Are we gonna sleep all the way home? All the way home. 
but Alien 3 crushes our hopes by killing Newton Hicks in the main credit sequence after an alien causes their ship to malfunction. It's both merciless and monumentally depressing. It also announces a notable departure from the thrilling yet fun tone of Aliens. This movie is just horrifying. Where are the others? They didn't make it. What? They didn't survive. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Misuse of Grindelwald, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Inconsistent casting and generic plotting ruined any intrigue around the villain. This is the man who tried to take my life. This man who has no magic, who would marry a witch and pollute our blood, create a forbidden union that would make us less. Not earning the runtime, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. A thin and derivative story made two hours feel like forever. Yeah. Right. Good job, little brother. High five. No. $100 million marketing campaign. Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Its costly marketing campaign probably focused on the wrong elements. I don't deserve these powers, if I'm being honest. Like, what am I even contributing? There's already a superhero with a red suit with a lightning bolt on it, and I'm fast, but he's faster. Aquaman is literally huge, and he's so manly, and Batman is so cool, and I'm... Just me. De-aging Dr. Jones, Indiana Jones, and the Dial of Destiny. The old-fashioned franchise loses some charm with distracting digital effects. You were alone? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, stretching The Hobbit into three movies, The Hobbit franchise. I found it as the small things, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keeps the darkness at bay. Looking to recapture the sweeping majesty? Not to mention the critical and commercial success of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the filmmakers sought to make an adaptation of The Hobbit. Unfortunately, the resulting Peter Jackson trilogy stretched the material far too thin. You would have to manage without pocket handkerchiefs and a good many other things which Bill Burr beckons before we reach our journey's end. The Tolkien story could feasibly fit into a single epic. Even an efficient 90-minute movie could do it justice. To break it up into three overstuffed entries was too much for the relatively simple tale of a hobbit, a wizard, and several dwarves stealing back a treasure from a villainous dragon. It might not have harmed its astronomical box office, but the series is severely overshadowed by Jackson's original trilogy. Tea is at four. There's plenty of it. You are welcome anytime. Which franchise movie let you down the most? Sound off in the comments down below. You interfered in my world, I destroyed yours. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.